Okay, drawing with black and white on tone paper is probably one of the quickest drawing methods. Um, and and I mean, if you want to do a full drawing, you can do one, you know, in any anywhere from like 20 minutes to two hours, depending on um, what you want to do. You have some options of medium. Um, you know, I like, you can use Conte sticks and stuff like that. And those were great. Um, and I might do a demo with those. Um, but I like pencils because they're a little easier to uh, easier to deal with in terms of um, using them and transporting them and stuff. Um, one of the new things that I found is um, using this uh, Mars Lumograph Black or, or one of those um, ebony pencils because they have carbon mixed with graphite. Um, and using that for the black um, instead of like a charcoal pencil. Um, and the first thing you want to do uh, is create a value scale real quick. So I, I like to go off in the corner and make a few boxes, right? So the first box is going to be the lightest I can get, or at least near the lightest. So a couple layers, heavy pressure. And then I like to come down, create another box that's somewhere in between that and the tone of the paper. Now, in terms of absolute value, the tone of the paper is um, is pretty light. It might be like a three on a value scale. Then I like to leave a blank square for the paper itself, and then come down and create at least two dark values. Maybe three. What I look for in terms of creating a value scale is even jumps between each segment. So if you squint at it, you should see an even jump from box to box, right? So the distance remains the same between any two. Um, and here I might actually need a six step value scale because if I keep the jump sort of even, I'm going to need an extra one to get to the full darkness of this, um, of this uh, carbon pencil. And if I get pretty dark and realize that the jumps and even, I can go back and readjust as well. So um, that black might be a little bit different than the, the Conte carbon black. Um, the Conte is probably going to get just a shade darker, deposit more material, just generally be darker and have a different tone to it. Probably be a little more matte, a little warmer probably. So the Conte pencil scale might turn out just a little bit different on the on the dark side. So there you have it. You have a little value scale. Um, so whatever material that you choose to use, I'm going to go with Conte this time. You have kind of options. The other thing that you're going to need um, for drawing with black and white on Conte is a, is a good hard eraser um, because you can't mix. I'll show you what happens when you mix. Right? So if you put a tone down over an area and then you go through it with the opposite color, you get this weird blended silvery gray thing. So what happens is if you want to interject in an area where you have um, tone Right. Let's say we've got a little, a little first dark value area, and we want to go through there with some white. What I'm going to do is use a bit of the eraser and get as much of that tone out as I can. If there's a little bit there, it won't actually um, make much of a difference. But um, you got to try to get a good amount out, and then I can switch to the other one, and you can see it doesn't get that. Um, silvery tone, right? It doesn't turn to mud, stays stays pure. So that's like the, the thing to keep in mind is that um, you don't want to mix these. Now, you know, you do have options when you go around to, to define an edge. Like if this is the edge of, a, of an object right here, like I don't necessarily have to, to use black around that edge. I can come through um, 
and define that edge with white if there's like a highlight around the edge or something like that. Um, so you have options for how to kind of finish things off um, with this method. So I've got a little, um, the other the other thing that's generally important for doing any kind of like um, drawing, especially early on, is having a single light source. Having a second light source can get really confusing. Um, so at first I would avoid that completely. Um, just use one light source. It, it's going to make it make a huge world of difference. And here I've got an old um, an old tea bowl that one of my friends um, made a long time ago. And it's basically um, uh, an interesting cylindrical form, shallow. Um, I'm going to use all my techniques from drawing one. I'm going to put a real. I'm going to start real faint. You know, I remember I took a workshop from. Glenn Villepew one time, and he was so patient, it was incredible, and he basically spent 20 minutes on this um, figure drawing, and he could barely see it. Like, you had to get up within three feet of it to be able to see it, and uh, that was incredible to me because I'd no I didn't realize, like, how softly he drew, um, and when you're drawing for, for a demo, you have to kind of draw a little bit more forcefully. Um, so ideally you would be drawing extremely soft. Um, so I can check the, the quadrants of this ellipse and I can, and I can check distances to be sure that I'm okay here. Um, and then I can, um, uh, move along with the process, right? This, um, this search line was kind of wrong, but I can use that to, to create the, um, the thickness of the of the ceramic itself, the porcelain. Um, there we go. And then I kind of want to give myself a reminder of where that edge is. And then the tea bowl, um, you can't really see it, but when you pick it up, it has this, this slight inward swell to the form. So I want to exaggerate that and bring that into the drawing. And continue with the, cyl the cylindrical form of it, but make sure that that remains there, because I think that's part of what makes it really um, a really incredible form. Okay, so now I have to decide um, uh, several things about reflected light and, and where the shadow core is. The shadow core is about right here on the object. So the first step is to take basically this value right here and differentiate areas of lightness and darkness. So I want to go in and create the internal ellipse down here to match as well, just to be sure that I've got that because I can see it when I look into the bowl because it's a very shallow bowl, right? Okay. Um, then what I can do is I can take this across the central axis down at the bottom here, which is about here. I can go across and I can find where the shadow comes up here. And it comes up about right here. And it, and it kind of changes direction on the bottom of the bowl. And then now what I want to do is poster. I want to take this value and everywhere that's in shadow, I'm going to go ahead and fill in that basic tone. And then the bottom of the bowl that you can just kind of barely see is there. And then I need to get the shadow out and run the shadow back. And then the shadow is also going to get its own poster. And when your poster, draw right over edges. Doesn't matter. You're just laying tone down. But you can still see where that edge is, so it's not going to really affect much in terms of your drawing. Um, you can move that up a little bit. So now um, I can poster in the other direction. I can take the white, and I can use that for any areas um, that I perceive to be fairly light. And um, this is kind of a light gray bowl. So maybe the the tone of the bowl is actually going to be this this paper tone, but 
it's sitting on a white piece of paper. So I know that this white piece of paper is going to be a huge area of light. So I can go through and I can give this some context. So that's all I'm really thinking. Just kind of ground it on a plane and make sure that plane has its own value distinct from everything else. Okay. So now I have this object, its context, and the poster. So I kind of know where all the values are. Um, now what I can do is begin to differentiate and start to work into these values. And real quick, right here, it's actually on the base of the bowl, um, just kind of under it. And then what happens sometimes is if you create that dark, it can get a little bit flat um, and non-dimensional. So I may have to go in there with, with a secondary and bring this tone, um, tone number five out of six, in under that and make sure that that kind of works together pretty well. And then I can potentially deepen the shadow tone because the shadow tone, this mass, is a little bit darker than anything on the pole itself. So I can go ahead and differentiate that. So I tend to think of drawing in terms of value as just differentiating so I can see stuff. You know, I like to, you know, the process should be pretty simple so that you can follow it all the time. Um, and each step of the process should be pretty low stakes, right? So now we've ratcheted through several steps. We've done a gesture, we checked the gesture, we added in some details, we postered out, um, we gave the thing its context, and so we postered both in terms of this value and this value. And then um, now we're moving into just differentiating larger blackier areas, right? So, um, you know, there's some reflected light things happening. I'm gonna need to probably deepen the shadow core just a bit to have that make sense so that I can kind of soften it as it goes into the rest of the bowl. And then around the, the lip of the bowl, it's a bit dark. And it kind of, it's not necessarily what I would say is, is a line, it's, a, it's just a, so I'm going to use a line and kind of soften it as I kind of go outwards. And then I'm getting a reflection of the shadow on the bowl, so I'm going to try to pick that up. And it's just slightly lighter than this shadow. And so what I can probably do is borrow an illustrator's technique and bring in this line here. And use a little bit of line to begin to differentiate. Now a crazy thing happens with the bottom. Once it gets to the bottom, I'm getting a little band of white reflected. So I'm going to need to go in there and I want to snag that and use my white to kind of create this bottom edge here. Because I'm getting about the lights kind of bouncing back off of the off of this and hitting here. Um, it's kind of a funny thing. And then I want to be sure to very quickly go over to the other side and make sure that I've got the, the differentiation over here to match. And then under the bowl here, there's um, a bit of a shadow going on. And then on the rim up here, I've got a little bit of a shadow here. And then I've got a deep highlight right here. So I've done my darkest dark. And I also want to do my lightest light, right? Which is about right here. Got this deep, interesting highlight. I've also got a highlight back here in the back of the bowl. Small one, and then I've got another one up here. And counterintuitively, I've got one about right here too. Um, so I may need to go through and add some add some stuff to the bowl, lighten up some areas real softly, start to make that work a little bit better. Um, I might need to get a little bit of white in here, sort of in between these values, 
These six values are kind of a starting place. And then I can erase too. I can erase my construction lines now that I'm kind of confident in where I'm at. And then I can work into the complexity of this shadow here. It's dark over here. Lightens up over here. Kind of continues dark downward. And then around the bottom of the bowl, it's pretty dark for whatever reason. You can see a little bit of handprints in the bottom of the bowl, like so. And I'm catching more and more subtlety every time I kind of go take a pass through the object, make, make things kind of blend out and so on. <laughs> And I can go through and I can soften up this back of, back of the rim, get a little bit of white in there too. And pretty much I've created a, a pretty quick uh, study of this object. I mean, it didn't take, it didn't take particularly long time and you kind of see a lot of the shadow anatomy. And that's really all we're after is, is kind of communicating what this object is about. Now I can do a few things further. Um, you know, there's always more to do. I can take this this white and I can differentiate this line a little bit better. So that I get the, the bottom of the bowl differentiated completely. Um, you know, there's certain areas that I'm a little like unhappy with in terms of like the contour, like you can't really tell where the um the bottom of the bowl is versus the base down here so i can come through and i can bump up the base a little bit and i can deepen shadows bump contrast down And I can fuss and render basically till my heart's content from here. And I can soften out shadows some. And one thing you'll notice is that I'm not doing a lot of blending. I, I just kind of like use paper texture and mark making. Um, and I find that that more um, more useful than blending because blending um, actually takes a lot of the stuff, the material that you pull put down and pulls it back up. And that's not really what you want to do. It's not super productive for your drawing. And then you come back and clean up the edges. Use a little bit of line. If you use line, you know, vary up the line weight, use it selectively, um, and kind of create some interest with the line in terms of um, the amount of variety you can get out of it. Um, I can use, I can pick up more detail here, use a little line with white down here. Not necessarily in, the, in a highlight way, but in a way to just help define this rim because it kind of alternates between like dark and light areas. Um, so yeah, that's some concerns for working with uh, black and white on, on toned paper.